Hello everyone, welcome to my new book review. This time I chose The Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston for different reasons. One of them is the current are the current events going on in America right now and also because my friends are sitting for their exams of fiction, which is going to talk about Zora Neale Hurston. And also because I think this is a very important cornerstone in African American literature and we cannot just go and ignore this fact, all right? So let's start talking about Zora Neale Hurston. So Zora Neale Hurston was born in 1891 and she passed away in 1960. She was a, she was a folklorist and anthropologist and received her works translating into her novels. Uh, she was a great figure in Harlem Renaissance, uh, which was the golden age of African American culture. And a lot of people, a lot of African American artists went to New York City because they considered it as the mecca of expression and artistic freedom and cultural freedom. And one of them was Hurston herself. Um, Hurston takes a lot of her life into this novel. For example, she moved into Eatonville when she was young. Same town she's talking about in the novel. She, uh, her father became a mayor. Same event going on in the novel as well. So you see there are bits of her life in it. Uh, in the 1920s, she started sharing her novels and writing her novels, but a lot of people ignored it and considered it as simplistic and really not uh, representative of the African American culture. We'll talk about that later on and we'll see how this is actually wrong. So let's start talking about um, her novel. So the novel is about Janie Crawford, who is an attractive teenager. By, by the way, let's just mention the fact that I am giving, giving you this chronological order kind of story timeline, but in the novel it's a postmodern kind of uh, writing, so the events are not really this way, but I'm giving you the chronological order order. So just bear with me on that one. <laughs> All right. So Janie was raised by her grandmother because her mother ran away. I will not tell you why. You have to find out out on your own. And because her grandmother comes from a generation of slavery, so she has a different sets of goals and so. So she wants her granddaughter to have security, insurance, and to have property. That's why she tells her, go marry this man who is like in his 50s, Logan Killicks, and you'll have all of this. You'll have a successful life. Except Janie, of course, who was born into a free life, and she's not really a slave, and she doesn't encounter a lot of events of slavery. She's like, I have different sets. And we see this generation gap of ideas and so in other plays, just like in other literature, just like the play of Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry, where uh, the, the ideals are not so similar. And that is one thing that Hurston talks about. So, but she still marries him because she wants to like uh, follow her grandmother's advice. And then she marries him, but this man turns out to be unromantic and very old for her. And she, I mean, she's a teenager and he leaves her as a housewife to take care of the animals and the farm. So she's not really having fun until one day this man, Joe Starks, uh, Joe Starks, who is very charming and so starts to seduce her and, is, and he starts to flirt with her and so... And so she just goes along with him and she actually starts thinking about running away. And she does this once after a fight with her husband and she tells him, if I run away, what would you do? But he is silent and he doesn't answer. So she takes that as a sign of, you know what, I guess, yeah, I'll just run away. And she runs away. So she goes out with this charming, ambitious man and this guy has a lot of ideas. So he goes to this Eatonville town and he buys lands, he starts a shop and he becomes the mayor. And of course, with this high status and all, you are the wife of this man, so you have to follow in the steps of your husband. But she doesn't really want that because she's, she just wants to enjoy her life, but her husband forces her to do uh, things that she doesn't want. For example, she has to wear things she doesn't want to. She doesn't, she is prohibited from speaking with the common people. And you see, this is a political issue talking about how there is actually classification between the African Americans themselves. And uh, people uh, start talking about her and so, and the men there start to desire her. So her husband tells her, get in the shop and stay there. That's where your place is. And tells her to hide her hair because that's a sign of her femininity. And you see, you see he really boxes her up. And she starts to decrease her love for him. And she starts to back away and she's like, what is this man? This is not the man I fell in love with. And after 20 years of marriage, he actually manages to reach the climax when he actually slaps her after she insulted him in front of the townspeople. And that's when she's like, no, 
I don't tolerate this anymore. So she stops talking to him. Later on, like a few days later or so, a few days later, um, he falls ill and he dies. And she's like, you know what? I'm just gonna take this as a sign. And she takes off her handkerchief and she takes off everything. And then she's free and she starts wearing colors and all. And of course that is not going to be unnoticed because the townspeople start talking about her and rumors start to spread and she's like what kind of a woman does this she's supposed to be grieving why is she doing this and you see uh this is where herson criticizes the community in itself because first of all they're the ones spreading the the rumors and they're the ones who are actually being the enemies of themselves not the white people uh, people in fact white people here are not mentioned as they're supposed to be or um as we think they were supposed to be and that I guess that's why they, she was criticized Hurston was criticized at that time because she didn't really talk about the conflict between white and black she was really talking about the conflict between black and black about the people within the community themselves who are like trying to see themselves as elites and are trying to really hinder the community and so let's go back to Janie. So Janie just lives her life without caring about what people say and then she falls in love with this man who is 12 years younger than her, comes by randomly and he seduces her, flirts with her and sees her as an equal as he asks her to play chess with him because in the day when Jody was there, he, could, he didn't allow her to play chess with people. So that was really a new thing for her. And then he convinces her to come with him and live the life he used to live, which is full of harvest and randomness and adventure. So she just sells the place, uh, the shop, and just goes with him and marries him. Of course, the first days will be were going to be difficult, uh, but she manages and they manage. But the ending is still sad and interesting, and I'll let you figure out what happens later on. So you see, actually... Zora Neale Hurston's novel was not really simple, or as a lot of critics said, uh, was not political. It was really political because it talks about feminism, patriarchy, sexism, racism, womanhood, and intersectionality between being a black and a woman at the same time, double standards and all. And that's why you should read uh, Their Eyes Were Watching God. Uh, also, if you want to watch it quickly, there is a movie by starring Halle Berry, 2005. Not much to say about it because it's the same story, but it's interesting to see. There's a very hot TV scene, uh, the jazz scene. You'll understand which one I'm talking about. And that's it. Good luck for you and see you in another review.